With all of our devices becoming more and more connected, security is always a concern. What I want to know is what would happen if Russell here got hacked. So today, we're going to hack a robot. A common attack that happens is an attacker will get into your computer and start mining Bitcoin in the background. Now what that means is your computer is doing calculations for the Bitcoin network and in exchange, the attacker is getting Bitcoin. Now it's not the end of the world for you. It just kind of slows your computer down, makes it feel sluggish, makes it run hotter and use more power, but your computer is still usable. Inside of Russell's controller is a computer and the computer is actually running Windows, which is used in a lot of industrial robots. Collaborative robots usually use Linux, but either way, that computer still has some sort of security concerns that you need to keep in mind. What would happen if a robot's computer got hacked and started mining Bitcoin in the background? Would the ARM stop running paths correctly or stop running them altogether? Would the safety system stop working properly and the ARM actually become dangerous? Or would the arm just continue on like normal when you wouldn't even notice that it's happening? That's what we're gonna find out today. Now, this is a different video than I normally do. So let me know what you think down in the comments. If you like it, if you don't, let me know. We're gonna look at a few different things today. The first is to see if I can tell using the controller that something is wrong. Maybe the menus are loading a little bit slower or the arm isn't reacting as quickly to what I'm asking it to do. It's going to be a little bit subjective, but I'm going to see just on its face if it's obvious that something's gone wrong. The second is checking the motion of the arm, making sure that the arm is still able to do the paths that it was programmed to do and do them exactly the same way to make sure that it's still rounding properly and still moving at exactly the same speed. That makes sure that it's not scrapping parts all of a sudden. The third thing we're going to check is the safety system making sure that the arm actually stops when it's supposed to and doesn't somehow become dangerous for the operator or anyone else in the facility. This video is just covering how the arm would be affected by an attack like this. I'm not going to cover security in any amount of detail here. You'd have to do a lot of things very wrong to end up in this situation. To do the mining, I'm using nice hash. It's a pretty easy setup. It has a nice little web interface too, so you can monitor your miners remotely and it does a lot of the configuration and setup already for you, which is pretty easy. The actual miner that I'm using is XMRig. We're not going for peak mining performance here. We're just trying to fully load the CPU. Setting this up was a giant pain in the ass. Good luck to any attacker that actually makes it into one of these robots. On the controller, I've started mining. It's mining at 27 hashes a second, which is terrible, but for an attacker, they don't really care because 27 hashes per second for free is better than none. And if they make this attack on thousands of computers, they can actually get a decent hash rate going. If I go to the task manager and look, under performance, the CPU is pegged. It's at 100%. The test for this is going to be really simple. We're just going to make a program where the robot runs through a motion and constantly hits a button over and over again. If all the pieces of that path remain the same, then those button presses will be very consistent both while and while not mining. The path that the robot is doing is two linear sections with rounding in between. And that's important. When a robot is doing a linear path, it will take the line and split it up into a bunch of small sections. Then at each section, it will do the inverse kinematics to calculate the joint angles of the arm and will move the arm to those joint angles. So what that means is as you're doing a linear motion, the arm is constantly doing calculations along that path. So it needs the most from the CPU, theoretically. If you're doing a joint motion, the arm will just calculate the start and the end of the path and not really need to think much along the path. Between these two linear sections right over the button, there's rounding or continuous motion. So that's the arm trying not to stop and make a nice smooth path through that point. To make that path, it needs to know a lot about the arm. It needs to know 
the acceleration and deceleration of each motor. It needs to know the weight of the arm, where that weight actually is located to create a nice smooth arc through there. So that again is a lot of calculations that the arm needs to be doing on the CPU, which is theoretically taken by mining right now. This is a really simple circuit. It has a button with a very short travel on it, which means that if the robot deviates by more than a millimeter, it won't actually press the button anymore. This is wired into the GPIO on the Jetson. Anytime the button is pressed, the software receives an interrupt, which stops it from doing whatever it was doing and it immediately records the time that that happened. I'm running this loop for about 10 minutes and recording every button press through that time. When not mining, the average time is 6.24 seconds and a standard deviation of under one millisecond, which is crazy consistent. I'm doing the same when the robot is mining and without it mining. When running this process while mining, we get exactly the same mean or average at 6.24 seconds and a very, very slightly wider standard deviation at also well under a millisecond, which is still very, very consistent. Because the standard deviation is so small and the average is exactly the same between the two samples, what this means is these are basically exactly the same data. Mining doesn't actually have any sort of appreciable difference on how consistent these paths are. Since all the different pieces that are needed to make a path remained consistent throughout this test, that means that the path was actually very consistent regardless of mining. So this is definitely a pass. For testing the safety for this, we're gonna actually be testing KUKA Safe Operation. Now that's a software package on the robot that will make sure that the arm doesn't go anywhere that it's not supposed to. So we're gonna put a box around it and make sure that the robot can't actually leave. Now that is running in software, which is important because that will be affected by CPU usage. Whereas something like the e-stop won't because that is a dedicated piece of hardware inside the control box, which can't be affected by whatever the software is doing. So that for sure would not be affected by Bitcoin mining. To test safe operation, I just made a simple program that moves the robot in a straight line. Now I add a workspace around the robot. This is a box that the robot is not allowed to leave under any circumstances. And that is right in the middle of the path. So if I run this program again, the robot stops once it gets to the edge of that workspace. I'm running this test a bunch of times in a row and looking at exactly where the robot stops every time to make sure that it's always stopping in the same spot and also it's stopping in the same spot when and when not mining. The robot always stopped in exactly the same spot within a fraction of a millimeter. So that means that even when the CPU is loaded because of Bitcoin mining, safe operation is still keeping the robot safe. And that is very, very important. There should be basically nothing you can do to make a safety system unsafe. So I'm glad that that's the case. How responsive the controller is, is a somewhat subjective metric, but that's why I'm leaving it to the end. Through making this video, I created, edited, and ran programs. I jogged the robot. I changed settings on the pendant. I switched in and out of windows. I hit the e-stop. I basically used the robot how I normally would, and I couldn't tell whether it was mining or not. I found myself regularly switching to windows to see if the robot was mining because I couldn't tell on the controller. So that to me is just a flying pass for this. So I have some good news and some bad news. The bad news is if an attacker gets into your network and starts Bitcoin mining on your robot, well, you've got some big network problems you gotta sort out. But the good news is that your robot will very likely just keep making parts happily and won't cause any problems, so that's great. I am a little surprised by these results though. I thought that if the CPU was fully loaded on the robot, that the robot would start to struggle in doing its paths, but Kuga's doing a really good job with their software. 
This is definitely a different video than I normally do. So whether you like it or if you don't, let me know down in the comments so I know for next time. Robots are awesome. Thanks for watching. See you next time.